Phenomenalism is the view that physical objects cannot justifiably be said to exist in themselves, but only as perceptual phenomena or sensory stimuli e.g. redness, hardness, softness, sweetness, etc. situated in time and in space. In particular, some forms of phenomenalism reduce talk about physical objects in the external world to talk about bundles of sense data. History Phenomenalism is a radical form of empiricism. Its roots as an ontological view of the nature of existence can be traced back to George Berkeley and his subjective idealism, upon which David Hume further elaborated. John Stuart Mill had a theory of perception which is commonly referred to as classical phenomenalism. This differs from Berkeley's idealism in its account of how objects continue to exist when no one is perceiving them this view is also known as local realism. Berkeley claimed that an omniscient God perceived all objects and that this was what kept them in existence, whereas Mill claimed that permanent possibilities of experience were sufficient for an object's existence. These permanent possibilities could be analyzed into counterfactual conditionals, such as, if I were to have Y-type sensations, then I would also have X-type sensations. As an epistemological theory about the possibility of knowledge of objects in the external world, however, it is probable that the most easily understandable formulation of phenomenalism is to be found in the transcendental aesthetics of Immanuel Kant. According to Kant, space and time, which are the a priori forms and preconditions of all sensory experience, refer to objects only to the extent that these are considered as phenomena, but do not represent the things in themselves. While Kant insisted that knowledge is limited to phenomena, he never denied or excluded the existence of objects which were not knowable by way of experience, the things in themselves or nomena, though he never proved them. Kant's epistemological phenomenalism, as it has been called, is therefore quite distinct from Berkeley's earlier ontological version. In Berkeley's view, the so-called things in themselves do not exist except as subjectively perceived bundles of sensations which are guaranteed consistency and permanence because they are constantly perceived by the mind of God. Hence, while Berkeley holds that objects are merely bundles of sensations see bundle theory, Kant holds unlike other bundle theorists that objects do not cease to exist when they are no longer perceived by some merely human subject or mind. In the late 19th century, an even more extreme form of phenomenalism was formulated by Ernst Mach, later developed and refined by Russell, Ayer and the logical positivists. Mach rejected the existence of God and also denied that phenomena were data experienced by the mind or consciousness of subjects. Instead, Mach held sensory phenomena to be pure data, whose existence was to be considered anterior to any arbitrary distinction between mental and physical categories of phenomena. In this way, it was Mach who formulated the key thesis of phenomenalism, which separates it from bundle theories of objects. Objects are logical constructions out of sense data or ideas, whereas according to bundle theories, objects are made up of sets, or bundles, of actual ideas or perceptions. That is, according to bundle theory, to say that the pair before me exists is simply to say that certain properties greenness, hardness, etc. are being perceived at this moment. When these characteristics are no longer perceived or experienced by anyone, then the object pair, in this case, no longer exists. Phenomenalism as formulated by Mach, in contrast, is the view that objects are logical constructions out of perceptual properties. On this view, to say there is a table in the other room when there is no one in that room to perceive it, is to say that if there were someone in that room, then that person would perceive the table. It is not the actual perception that counts, but the conditional possibility of perceiving. Logical positivism, a movement begun as a small circle which grew around the philosopher Moritz Schlick in Vienna, inspired many philosophers in the English-speaking world from the 1930s through the 1950s. Important influences on their brand of empiricism included Ernst Mach, himself holding the chair of inductive sciences at the University of Vienna, a position Schlick would later hold, and the Cambridge philosopher Bertrand Russell. The idea of the logical positivists, such as A.J. Ayer and Rudolf Carnap, was to formulate the doctrine of phenomenalism in linguistic terms, so as to define out of existence references to such entities as physical objects in the external world. Sentences which contained terms such as table were to be translated into sentences which referred exclusively to either actual or possible sensory experiences. 
20th century American philosopher Arthur Danto asserted that a phenomenalist believe s that whatever is finally meaningful can be expressed in terms of our own sense experience. He claimed that the phenomenalist really is committed to the most radical kind of empiricism, for him reference to objects is always finally a reference to sense experience. To the phenomenalist, objects of any kind must be related to experience. John Stuart Mill once spoke of physical objects as but the permanent possibility of experience and this, by and large, is what the phenomenalist exploits, all we can mean, in talking about physical objects—or non-physical objects, if there are any—is what experiences we would have in dealing with them. However, phenomenalism is based on mental operations. These operations, themselves, are not known from sense experience. Such non-empirical, non-sensual operations are the non-empirical matters of space, time, and continuity that empiricism in all its forms and despite its structures seems to require. See for comparison sensualism, to which phenomenalism is closely related. Criticisms <coughs> 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 Roderick Chisholm criticized the logical positivist version of phenomenalism in 1948. C. I. Lewis had previously suggested that the physical claim, there is a doorknob in front of me, necessarily entails the sensory conditional, if I should seem to see a doorknob and if I should seem to myself to be initiating a grasping motion, then in all probability the sensation of contacting a doorknob should follow. Chisholm objected that the statement, there is a doorknob, does not entail the counterfactual statement, for if it were to do so, then it must do so without regard to the truth or falsity of any other statement, but suppose the following statement was true. I am paralyzed from the neck down and experience hallucinations such that I seem to see myself moving toward the door. If this were true, Chisholm objected, then there could be a doorknob in front of me, I could seem to myself to see a doorknob, and I could seem to myself to be performing the correct sort of grasping motion, but with absolutely no chance of having a sensation of contacting the doorknob. Likewise, he objected that the statement that, the only book in front of me is red, does not entail the sensory statement, redness would probably appear to me were I to seem to myself to see a book because redness is not likely to appear under a blue light bulb. Some have tried to avoid this problem by extending the conditions in the analysandum, instead of, there is a doorknob in front of me. One could have it that, there is a doorknob, and I am not paralyzed, etc. In response, Chisholm objects that if one complicates the analysandum, one must also complicate the analyzins, in this particular case, that one must analyze in purely sensory terms what it means not to be paralyzed and so on, with respect to which the same problems would arise leading to an infinite regress. Another common objection to phenomenalism is that in the process of eliminating material objects from language and replacing them with hypothetical propositions about observers and experiences, it seems to commit us to the existence of a new class of ontological object altogether, the sensibilia or sense data which can exist independently of experience. Indeed, sense data have been dismissed by some philosophers of mind, such as Donald Davidson, as mythological entities that are more troublesome than the entities that they were intended to replace. A third common objection in the literature is that phenomenalism, in attempting to convert propositions about material objects into hypothetical propositions about sensibilia, postulates the existence of an irreducibly material observer in the antecedent of the conditional. In attempting to overcome this, some phenomenalists suggested that the first observer could be reduced by constructing a second proposition in terms of a second observer, who actually or potentially observes the body of the first observer. A third observer would observe the second and so on. In this manner we would end up with a Chinese box series of propositions of ever-decreasing material content ascribed to the original observer. But if the final result is not the complete elimination of the materiality of the first observer, then the translational reductions that are proposed by phenomenalists cannot, even in principle, be carried out. Another criticism is that the phenomenalist can give no satisfactory explanation of the permanent possibilities of experience. The question can be asked, what are the counterfactual conditionals which ground the existence of objects true in virtue of 
One answer given by phenomenalists is that the conditionals are true in virtue of past regularities of experience. However, critics object that this answer leads to circularity, first our actual experience was meant to be explained by the possibility of experience, and now the possibility of experience is meant to be explained by our actual past experience. A further objection to the phenomenalist answer is that generally speaking, conditionals are not true in virtue of their past occurrences. This is because it seems that a conditional could be true even if it never actually obtained, and also past occurrences only confirm that a conditional is true, but never make it so. Roderick Firth formulated another objection in 1950, stemming from perceptual relativity, white wallpaper looks white under white light and red under red light, etc. Any possible course of experience resulting from a possible course of action will apparently underdetermine our surroundings, it would determine, for example, that there is either white wallpaper under red light or red wallpaper under white light, and so on. On what basis are we to decide which of the hypotheses is the correct one if we are constrained to rely exclusively on sensibilia? Notable proponents Johannes Nikolaus Tettens John Foster Phenomenalistic Idealist